All right, welcome back everybody to the Hearthstone World Champions day number one, match number two between Kranich from Korea and Life Coach from Germany slash the European region. Welcome back everybody from the desk. My name is Frodi and I'm joined by Amaz and Robert Wing from the Blizzards community for Hearthstone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're ready for a very good action time here. What, what's been the first impression starting off the Hearthstone World Championships here in California? Amaz, how have you been doing so far? Yeah, I've been doing great. I just watched the last series and Taj took it really convincingly. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that the only priest uh, made it. So far, he needs to win right. one more to get out of groups. That's right, you're priest boy. Yeah, of course, That's of great. course. And now uh, we're gonna see, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, another great set of series between Kranich and Life Coach. Gotcha, and Robert, your boy, Young Hunter, ended up losing that match. Did you die a little inside? Uh, no, I was, Taj obviously came in here talking a really big game. You know, Europe's been like, oh, we're the best region. We're just gonna win everything, so. Uh, first series, they win 3-0. That's really good for their case of being sure. the strongest region. So it was very nice to see the the convincing play from Taj and, and Patron. You know, it was a lot of a lot of people said we won't see this deck. That's right. Obviously, we have surprises so. from Tice maybe coming out of his teammate life coach as well. Let's talk about what was said before the match by Cran. Some oh. very strong words. We always kind of joke about how people are they're saying things playfully, but it felt you know half serious. There were Cran just like I don't fear life coach. You know, maybe in the end he's kind of joking that he should retire, but uh, the point was still made that Kranich is very confident against one of the strongest technical players in the world. Do you have any follow-up to that, Amaz, based off of what you heard? Well, he better be because Life Coach is a very strong player, right? Mm -hmm. He, uh, along with uh, Tyus, won the ATLC. Um, so I expect that um, Life Coach is going to be super prepared for this tournament as well. And um, uh, yeah, we Kranich better be prepared. Protect All right, mind. well. The game number one is about to begin. We have Hunter versus Druid to begin things off, and Life Coach has definitely been exploring the Druid class a lot more often these days compared to what he used to play a lot of Paladin, used to play a lot of Handlock with the Warlock class. Meanwhile, Kranich, he's bringing a similar lineup to what Firebad did last year. He's playing Hunter, he's playing Warlock, he's playing Druid, I believe, and that's going to make for a very powerful set of classes and very interesting wow. card to start off. We see Bear Trap being included in Hunter. Amaz, you've played a lot of this style of Hunter. Mm -hmm. What's the benefit? What, what are some of the, the drawbacks of running this card and risks? Well, uh, the benefit of running Bear Trap is the first game, your opponent doesn't know what you're running. And sometimes they just assume it's like a freezing trap or like an explosive trap, like the normal traps. And then you suddenly get a 3-3 and you get a lot of tempo on the board, right? And of course, the downside is once you play that first game, um, other your other teammates or your opponents rather mm -hmm. will know that you have a bear trap and will play around that card instead. It's true. Now, Robert, as a follow-up question as well, um, you know you've played this matchup a lot from the hunter's perspective too. H how do you feel about the state of this matchup these days? Now that TGT has been out for a couple months, I think you're, as the hunter player, uh, you're really hoping to not see wild growth very early on. Uh, Darnassus Aspirin can be handled. You have tools to deal with that. But if you see that wild growth come out and they can really quickly get to Keeper of the Grove, they can really quickly get to swipe Drew to the Claw. You're in a bad place. Uh, I also think it depends on exactly what traps you brought. When we talked about bear trap, uh, I think bear trap, as you said, is kind of a one-off surprise tool unless you're also running explosive trap because then you force your opponent to try to guess. It just comes down to is this explosive, is this bear trap. Um, I think this is a very good matchup for the hunter. Uh, obviously, Druid is just a very strong class and, and can win a lot of situations, sure. but I think the Hunter has very equal chance. Yeah, I think you bring up an excellent point, is being able to get ahead of the mana, or we like to say using the most powerful tempo plays. Druid wants to leverage cards like Wild Growth really early on to get that mana crystal and hit their layer of threats, like you said, Druid the Claw. But yet, Hunter has good answers to that. They have cards like Freezing Trap. They have cards like Hunter's Mark, which can shut down the biggest threats in the world. You could have... A, a, a taunt minion with a thousand health, and Hunter's Mark will still shut it down for zero mana. So uh, it doesn't really matter how bi uh, how big of a board you end up building. Uh, that card can seize you some amazing tempo if Kranich finds an opportunity to use it effectively. Especially because as the Druid, you're usually in the earlier turns, you're just playing one big threat per turn, and it's usually like a beefier threat. So Hunter's Mark is actually a huge swing card in this matchup, especially Definitely. you know in conjunction with something like Knife Juggler to unleash the Hounds. You can just clear the board really quickly and get rid of, as you said, Druid Claw. I actually, call, uh, um, oh, go oops, ahead. But I actually like a life coach's uh, position here because usually as a druid, you have to skip your first two turns, you know, ramping up to wild growth or stuff like that. But now he actually has a board, and um, yeah, usually hunters just play minions instead of ramping up, and then druids can't really keep up with the board. But now life coach feels uh, pretty safe to just wild growth here. Yeah, there's a lot of things that go through life coach's mind. You know, what if this is 
uh, a hunter, which I want to activate freezing trap early. Then I have minions to play on curve. Not only do would I be able to benefit by killing off the trap very quickly with smaller minions, I do have minions to play after turn two, even if I didn't wild grow. So there's a lot of choices, and as such, life coach ended up going to the rope, which is uh, famously associated with life coach's brand as a player. But that's also why he's so meticulous and calculating. He's such a hard opponent to deal with because if life coach plays fast, and oh my goodness, I don't know, I don't know what he has anymore. Right. He, he always says that, you know, he uses the whole turn, not because of just that turn where he's thinking about, like, uh, what's going to happen Quickly. four turns from now. And stuff That's like right. That. Yeah. So while this might seem slow, there's a lot of really powerful implications with these decisions because what you build on this foundation, because of how Tempo drives this matchup, it could end up having ramifications to whether you win or lose the game. Mm -hmm. I like a, I like Life Coach's decision to turn one, put out the uh, the saplings as well, yeah. because that's a, that's actually buying him extra health here. As Kranich is choosing to use the Mad Scientist to actually you know clear those off the board, mm -hmm. uh, because obviously you know cards like Savage Roar can make those one ones you know suddenly do a lot more damage. So hmm. Life Coach has really kind of bought himself in essence four extra health, uh, is what it's looked like is going to happen here. So. Yeah, Life Coach is obviously going to be a little bit suspicious here. I mean, why did Kranish play a trap into his 1-1 one, one sapling on the board, right? So it's probably not a freezing trap. Um, he probably doesn't want to attack the face um, because, I mean, you wouldn't play explosive trap hmm. in this position either, right? So hopefully Life Coach's uh, problem-solving skills can, you know, kind of uh, picture out that, oh, it is indeed a bear trap or a snake trap. Yeah, snake trap seems the most likely given that the easy trade is the 1-1 one, one, and 2-1, two, two, just like you mentioned. Life Coach also might end up just not doing too much in this position, but what he does end up doing by attacking into this is oh. preparing for bear trap. Life Coach not caught off guard here, and you know, high level play, uh, trap psychology is actually a big deal here because you know, when you're playing on ladder, you might run into a opponent and you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure this is freezing trap, that's what this is yep. telegraphing, but it almost works kind of the opposite way sometimes in high level play. Also, so. I believe a second trap was activated, Yeah. and he attacked with the 1-1 one, one to the face directly, which signifies that this should be a snake trap as well. This should be a snake trap, it, uh, or it could be a snipe, I guess. It could be a snipe! <laughs> that Shade of Nax Ramus or Drew the Claw won't know what hit him. If it plays it in charge mode, that is. So that's that true. sequence was really, really good <laughs> for Life Coach. Yeah. Not only did he perfectly play around right. the bear trap, he now basically knows what that trap is. Yeah. And even if it wasn't Snake Trap, it would navigate so that way it activates Explosive correctly or Freezing Trap, and he would have follow-up plays. Very good sequencing, which again, is going to make Kranich's life difficult, but he still has some really powerful plays available in the following turns. But this is a little bit awkward. The Knife Juggler does start in a lot of uh, pressure, and if you want to kill the Knife Juggler in this position as Life Coach, you have to hit it with something, and it will activate the Snake Trap. That's right. Now, you, the problem with Snake Trap 2 mm. is that because those snakes are summoned, you get those activations in the Knife Juggler. You can kill the 1-1 one -one as it's attacking. Right. Yeah, it's a, that always makes for a funny uh, image in my head of the Knife Juggler. Like, this sapling's like coming speeding, and the Knife Juggler just whoosh, 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 like that's throws right. out the knives. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. And then, of course, you try to dodge like the Matrix, but that's not always the case. It's like the beginning of the Matrix when Neo keeps getting hit with everything. <laughs> uh, at least that's what uh, my minions experience. Good uh, movie. We're Good movie. Great, great yeah. movie. I love that movie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is kind of one of those things where when you're playing on ladder, you want to try to trick your opponent into activating the snake trap. Like, they won't know what it is. They want to get rid of the knife juggler. It's a high priority sure. target. Unfortunately, because Life Coach pretty much knows that it's a snake trap here, he's just going to make a druid of the claw. And obviously, snake trap is not that menacing in this context. Right. Now, on the follow up play, Kranich does have some very interesting choices available to him. It depends on how he wants to leverage cards like Hunter's Mark. Right. And how he wants to really push this snake trap to its limits because now he knows that Life Coach doesn't want to attack into the board at all. He also knows that Life Coach doesn't have a Wrath or something you know, to deal with the Knife Juggler or like a sure. Keeper or something like that. Sure. So uh, Kranich could go really greedy here or like really brave and just Hunter Smart the Drew of the Claw and just play a minion. Hopefully the uh, juggle hits that. Yeah, I think he's going for it. This is, oh, man. this is, you know, sometimes you just got to be brave. Uh, Kranich said in the beginning that he was a far cuter gamer than Life Coach, and he believes in himself and mm. doesn't quite pay off. Probably going to have to put the knife juggle into that. But. Quickly. Or he could just not attack as well. Yeah. He could put the onus onto the Drew of the Claw to make decisions. But it also oh, you guys is, are right. Yeah. That is a better play. He knows that his opponent probably didn't have Keeper of the Grove, like Amaz mentioned too, and that is one drawback of this play. It's you risk the idea if he can silence that Hunter's Mark and restore it back to a 4-6 minion. Right. 
Taunt, taunt though. Taunt. That's important. Yeah. That's important. Although, obviously, since Crane is just playing that slower, more mid range oriented Hunter, it's not you know, right. necessarily the end of the world. Yeah. Taunt does protect the face, which is very important in this matchup. Yeah. It's, it's very important in most matchups to have not zero HP. So <laughs> this is, yes, yeah. that is the primary win condition for now, mm. at least. Well, um, Life Coach here is still under some mm. pressure. So what, what what are some of the op options that we're exploring here, Maz? Uh, not really good options here. Uh, six or six mana, he can like, you know, utilize Swipe maybe to clear these snakes, but then he will have to take the snake trap damage, which right. he, well, Life Coach decides to use it now. Let's but. see if this pair does the Matrix. Oh, oh my well. goodness, is he the one? Oh, Wait, could, no, no way. <laughs> really? Bears wow. aren't super agile. This is kind of... Oh wow. my gosh! <laughs> that is... Um, he's the one. He's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Life Coach doesn't see the game the way we see the game. Everything no. is just green lines of code on the screen right now. He just sees knife juggles and wild yeah. growths. And, and hopefully this is where the series stops for him and there's no two other movies because if, if it goes on Ooh. from that point on, Ooh. then it might not be a good ending for Life Coach. But thankfully it's the first game. Anything could happen still from the series. Even though we just saw that Drew the Claw survive, Hunter still does have some comeback mechanics. Web Spinner can always pull up some really nasty things, not to mention that he can combine that with Houndmaster to have a really strong board. I also don't think Kranich here, I mean, yeah, Kranich would like to be farther ahead in damaging Life Coach at this point, but Life Coach's hand is not particularly great either. I give a Savage Roar, which doesn't really do much at the moment. One card could change that all, though. One card could change that. Houndmaster uh, obviously buffing that Web Spinner up to a 3-3, mm -hmm. making it a lot more intimidating, and it still drops a, a random B, so. That web spinner is in a good spot and can just start pushing pressure. It's a really strong play on turn five. You put seven power and six health on the yep. board. Uh, but Life Coach, on the other hand, drew a shredder, so he can actually utilize all his mana. So that's pretty mm. good. He can effectively do the same thing. By next turn, he'll have a 4 3 and a all 3 right. 3 as well. Yeah, so and both more sticky. Kind of make a Houndmaster and a web spinner yourself, too. Sure. I still feel like Kranich is at the moment in a little bit of a better spot, but Life Coach probably wants to start looking for like that Ancient of Lore, see if he right. can grab that. Kind of get some more cards. He's got the Savage Roar. Just kind of need to get that Force of Nature now. Right. Kranich has a much more aggressive hand. Right. Because um, Life Coach's Darnassus Aspirant loses significant power as the game goes on. It is a minion that could benefit off of triggering Freezing Trap if the game develops at that point. But Kranich has follow up with the Web Spinner as well. So any beast that he gets off. He can also use that for Kill Command, so it doesn't really feel like Haunted Creeper has to stay in the hand. One of the drawbacks of Kill Command is, you know, you want to get that full damage, right. and if you don't have a beast in hand, you won't get the full synergy. Oh, wow. I like yeah. this. This was a very important turn for Kranich. He basically had to make a decision on whether or not he was going to trade. That shade he obviously can't get to. The Shredder is going to require two different sources of damage to get rid of it, and he just, you know, he has the Kill Command in hand. Obviously, mm. Haunted Creeper wasn't necessarily what he wanted, and yeah, Life Coach. Mm. Walk uh, is a pretty bad draw here. No, that's not what you want to see. Not an extra option at Very all. Very low impact. Right. Yep. And he's at 12 HP, like you were m mentioning. So this is a very, very tough situation because Cranch effectively has 10 damage next turn no matter what. He's got a beast kill command plus the eagle horn bow and the hero power. And that's going to set Life Coach very, very low to potentially just die to the hunter hero power even if he clears the board. So right now, right, what Life Coach needs to hope for is like a Taunt minion off the Shredder, yeah. or yep. maybe a Vitality, Vitality Totem. totem. <laughs> Dude, you <laughs> underestimate. We thought it's the same thing. Yeah, hmm. but Victor the Vitality Totem is not to be underestimated. That's true. No, and I, I like the fact that, uh, as I was saying, Kranish took the more aggressive approach on that last turn, because you, know, you look at the West Winner, and you're like, all right, I could try to play this for value, try to play this for the long game. But when you're playing against the Druid, you understand that the Druid, the longer the game goes, the Druid's still in a fine spot. He can heal up, he can get to its combo, you can just die. Whereas the Hunter, you have a window where you have to close out the game. And I mean, you're forcing Life Coach to trade, so you're still going to get the Beast off of the Web Spinner. And that's exactly what happens here. Ooh, Bloodbend Raptor okay. is not a Vitality Totem, mm -hmm. fun fact. It is not. However, with this play, Life Coach still sets up an opportunity to draw Force of Nature. And yeah. with those two cards plus the two minions on board, that would be lethal. So if there's an opportunity for him to potentially pull the rug from underneath Kranich, and Kranich is not suspecting of potentially dying, which he will always calculate. With Druid being that far into the mana curve, you always have to suspect those two cards to kill you. I think this is a very interesting turn. This is another interesting turn for Kranich. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know he has these options where, he, on seven mana, you could Hero Power, mm -hmm. you could Web Spinner, or not Web Spinner, you can Haunted Creeper, and then you could Kill Command. That puts out a lot of damage. Sure. The Haunted Creeper is difficult to remove. Going to require multiple sources and really keep Life Coach from pressing, pressing what his agenda is. But that Oasis Snapjaw is also really big. Seven seven health is difficult to get off the board. And it's pretty good against Master, though. Yeah. yeah. 
And it's pretty good against the sport too. I mean, two attack is perfect. Sometimes you don't need any more than that. This so. is a great play from Kranich because no matter oh. what he does, actually he can still get he force can of a nature. Combo. Yeah. So even though it's not force of nature, it might even be the enabler. Are you calling this? Are you calling this, Dan? Is he I'm saying draw it's force it? of uh, nature. He's gonna draw it. No, no it's shade. Okay. It's not. But you know, one thing that was really good about Kranich's play is no matter what he did to the board, unless he's willing to give up kill command, he would still lose to a force of nature savage roar. And as such. If Life Coach doesn't Savage Roar and clear the minion here, that is lethal for Kranich. Right. This is a uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, psychology look at the Life Coach. It's you know you want that Savage Roar. That's going to help you close out that game if you get that Force right. of Nature next turn. But you know what do you think those three cards in Kranich's hands are? Their hands are like probably yeah. damage. Yeah, you have to expect the kill command at least, right. right? But the thing is, if you use the Savage Roar right now, then when are you going to kill the Hunter? You're going to give him like one more turn or two right. more and turns. That hero even. power's coming in every sure. turn. Right. So. You just so then you'd be relegated to hoping you draw a heal of some sort because then you're at this life stage where it doesn't even matter if you have taunts, you might just have direct damage to go past the taunts. Life Coach recognizes that if he has one single kill command, he's dead, but he's yeah. going to hope that Kranich doesn't have it. Unfortunately for our German player, though, Kranich does have this kill command. He's going to seal game number one. You have right. to play to win. That's uh, that's what Life Coach did here. He, he realized he needed that savage roar like a boss said. You have to be able to put that damage in there to get the Hunter in. You know, Kranich, uh, Kranich played this well. He understood when to turn aggressive. He's going to end up taking game one here against Life Coach. That's right. Very strong start for our very confident Korean player. And that's going to be a 1-0 lead. However, this is sort of the outcome that we've expected to happen, right? We weren't mm -hmm. saying that Hunter was a bad matcher for Druid. In fact, that was probably one of its best. I mean, Hunter for Kranich, as you can see from the uh, matchups here, is pretty good against Life Coach's lineup anyways. Yes. So... Uh, life Coach losing to Hunter isn't the worst thing that can happen for him. He still has his other decks, and Kranich still has his Druid and Warlock. So a lot of mirrors, potentially, that uh, Life Coach feels very confident in. Two things stand out to me a lot. The first is what we mentioned earlier, that Kranich does have a lineup that's very powerful and standard, similar to last year's lineup. Um, with the exception, of course, we don't know the Warlock being. The second thing is that Life Coach is completely different then Tice, his teammate, and both these guys yeah. practice with each other a lot. They're on the same team, uh, and they've traveled together to almost every event for the past year and a half, and yet they've picked six different classes. What's that all about, Robert? I mean, obviously, you know, you can be really close friends with someone and respect their opinions, but at the end of the day, you're coming to the Hearthstone World Championship. This is it. This is the big event. You have to go with your gut. You have to go with what you think gets you the win, and I like the fact that they both have very different styles at the end of the day. Yeah, that's right. So as we get ready for our second game to see if Life Coach can turn it around, you heard some strong words from Kranich at the very beginning and his thoughts on Life Coach. Let's hear what he had to say also about strong competition in general, not just his opponent. The reason why I'm playing this tournament is that I just really like the competition. I just feel really happy when I win against strong players. And that's why I just keep playing Hearthstone and try to qualify to this event. I like being strong opponents too. In fact, that's what I consider every one of my opponents. So I make myself feel better when I'm when I'm getting the victory that won every three days. So I think Kranich is off to a great start, feeling very good so far. How are you, how are you guys feeling about Kranich's play so far? Yeah, so far, it's been really good. It's been like he realizes when to go aggressive, when to, you know, establish the board. So, um, yeah, I'm impressed. Okay, now that we evaluate the classes as well, um, I do want to ask you a question um, to either of you. I'm just going to throw this out there. We've seen Warlock a lot, but we've seen players really favor Handlock prior to the Patron Warrior being changed a little bit. Um, how has the dynamic shifted from your perspective, Amaz, from the Warlock class? Well, um, Warlock um, can actually play Zoo now because uh, Warsong Commander is just no longer clears the whole board with the Patron, right? So um, yeah, Kranich right now, he's going to bring the uh, Demon Zoo back and Life Coach is going to be a control warrior. So it's going to be an interesting matchup because uh, I, I talk with a lot of pros and um, you know, it kind of goes either way. Some people think Zoo is better in this matchup. Some people think control warrior is really good. But when it comes down to it, it really depends on right. whether the warrior draws the fire war axe, right? Yes, that's true. I do apologize before. I did say that Tyson Life Coach played six different classes. What I meant was six different styles. Uh, the warriors do different. Uh, differentiate each other. There's one more of patron style, and then there's one that's completely defensive, and you play control warrior. And life coach here is going to immediately pass, seeing that he does have early game removal options, which will be very important, but he doesn't have some weapons to remove these early flame imps, which will do so much damage if it gets out of control. 
I think uh, back to your question about uh, Handlock, though. I think it's interesting to point out that, that Handlock was very much a, a popular deck because of what it could do against the Patron Warrior, which was considered at the time to be the strongest deck in the meta. Uh, whereas now, a lot of matchups are very bad for it, with Druid being such a popular class. Like, Handlock really does not want to play against Druid. Seeker Paladin is another one that I'm sure a lot of players were expecting to see more of. And Seeker Paladin actually just has a great matchup against Handlock because of Divine Shield, Redemption, Avenge, Mysterious Challenger coming down on turn six. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if more players as this tournament go on are favoring kind of that mid-range Demon Lock kind of Handlock or if they're you know just going straight for Zoo as Kranich is. I personally am really glad that Zoo is back. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time, when Patron was so dominant. Well, you know, Tice, Life Coach's teammate who just won a previous series, was using the Zoo deck uh, prior to this tournament mm -hmm. in a couple of events. So it is starting to make that slow transition into relevancy that people are aware of these days. Um, however, uh, one thing to note is that Warrior's also gotten much better too. You saw Bash, for example, being an early removal what option. That does give it some fighting spirit in the early game, so that way if you don't draw your weapons, you're not as much in trouble as you used to be in the past. Right, and it's important to note for people who maybe haven't seen Zoo in a, in a competitive tournament in a while, the win condition for Zoo is to very early on get control of the board with sticky minions and just kind of overrun the opponent until they don't have answers for the board. Then you finish them off with something like a Doom Guard. No. If you're running the heavier variant, you might Void Collar into Malganus. There are a lot of very important pieces that help you see all the game, but the name of the game is still Board Control Early Land, very similar to Midrange Hunter. Well, Zoo nowadays can be classified as a, a, a mid-range deck. Based off the way it curves, based off the way it plays its style, where very early you board control, but then you push for tempo in the late game. And those cards like Void Caller are the, the beneficiaries of that, right? You can get those demons out, which are normally incredibly expensive, and get out for really cheap. Now, this is a really sticky board, like you mentioned, but it's not also very threatening. And this gives some time for Life Coach to be able to start putting out threats, which can contest it, because four power for three minions is not a very strong amount of attack coming your way. Now that said, uh, Control Warrior tends to, aside from the weapons, have a lot of single target removal spells, which is obviously not super strong against a class or a deck like Zoo, where you just have, what? you know, no. Imp Gang Boss is making more minions, Haunted Creeper is leaving minions behind, so uh, it's kind of interesting. They both have kind of edges against each other, and then cards like I think Power Overwhelming can be, you know, the the swing cards that help them get through stuff like Sludge Belcher, get yeah. through all that extra HP. Defender of Argus is another really big card, and you know, Kranich getting that yes. second Haunted Creeper last turn and being able to just drop two Haunted Creepers as opposed to a Haunted Creeper and a Life Tap, so much bigger to me, Right. Now that Kranich has the perfect mana usage of Power Overwhelming and Defender of Argus, or Implosion, however, it's one thing to consider of how far you want to extend into the board yeah. with Brawl being right. a possibility. Well, you don't want to use Implosion because you don't have enough space for all the creatures that are going to I also mean, you're point. assuming yourself you're going to roll four, right? Yeah, <laughs> assuming you roll four. Right. I like this play a lot. He's got a very big board. Uh, Implosion has the ability to generate a lot of minions, so maybe he saves that for, for after this turn if he doesn't see Brawl and a minion comes down. Uh, Life Coach kind of needs to start finding a Brawl. This is this is a matchup that has existed very beginning of Hearthstone. Control Warrior versus Zoo, and Brawl is such a big part of this matchup and remains so even today. Right, and I mean, it's past the weapon point, right? Right. Uh, just look at Life Coach, he's like in excruciating pain. Like, where are my weapons for the first six turns? He's definitely rocking the not like this, mm. uh, as some call it. Well, for now, it's not like he's out of options either. In fact, Shield Maiden does give him some more time, and that's something that is really valuable because outside of those Doom Guards, Zooey doesn't really have that explosiveness. If you don't, if you haven't watched since the end of last year's BlizzCon, for example, Zoo still had the ability to kill from the hand very quickly with Soul Fire and a few other cards. But these days, Zoo is much more board centric, and therefore, if you can't kill your opponent with the minions on board, say you have no minions at all, how do you end the game if Warrior's at two health? It's like you can't implosion in the face. No, and it's funny because the original pre-Zoo, there was the, the Aggro Warlock deck, which was just Arcane Golems, which was just Leroy's, Soul Fires, uh, Power Overwhelming's damage, damage, damage. Yep. And as you pointed out, they've kind of trimmed away a lot of that in favor of having more consistent boards and being sure. able to, to yep. battle for that. Ooh, Dr. Boom Ooh. is a pretty good pickup there. That's pretty nasty considering... Do you implosion? I mean, you, you wouldn't have enough space when you roll the four, but still. Yes. Well, you if you roll the four, it doesn't matter anyways, right? Because oh, you would have sacrificed the one more. So yeah, you do implosion first here. He just rolled the four. Just. It matters if he 
No, it's actually an better. Demon. Yeah, he takes an, he takes extra damage to the right. face. So that's actually better to implosion there first. Now this, if nothing gets destroyed, and even if he would have to lose three minions to get full effect off of Doctor Boom next turn, so this is kind of a <laughs> okay. the problem of being too wealthy. Oh, okay. anti synergy of Doctor Boom. Yeah, it is a significant problem though because now life he just drew death bite. That's pretty significant because now he can set up for a really good death bite the following turn and keep his board full right. and realize this is the strongest the board can ever be. You can't have more than seven minions. Therefore, if I set up Death Spite and even you hit him, Gang Boss, it won't spawn a 1 1. Yeah, that's true. But Death Spite going to the uh, Haunted Creeper here would be uh, pretty sweet. Um, because um, the next turn you will hit the Imp Gang Boss, and the Imp Gang Boss doesn't summon another yep. 1 1 as well. Right. Uh, and I guess the weakness of Zoo is that you can't kill your own creatures. Your board state is always going to be, you know, you similar can. if you have nothing, you know? You could if you have the right tools to do it, but it's generally not very efficient Yeah. because you want board anyways. I don't think there is a tool to kill your own minions. Is yeah, there? you can implosion your own minions. Power oh, overwhelming. You, oh, you could. Power, okay, power yeah, overwhelming. True. And okay. then Void Terror technically kills minions, but you need oh, space, yeah. space to do it. Play, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also worth noting that as much as Kranich has dominated his board early on, I've got just at 24 health. Right. And mm -hmm. that's that's the power of Control Warrior. <laughs> He's going to life tap, most likely. Yeah. And this is supposed to be the turn 7 boom. And Ocean, you, you joked about being too wealthy, <laughs> but this is definitely a case where the belly is at its limit, right? Because yeah. he's, he's expanded the board so much. Uh, this might be the opportunity Life Coach needed Ooh, to get back wow. into the game. Okay, that's a pretty good draw. Jessica as well. Trueheart on eight mana means that you can play Jessica Trueheart and then just get that four health from tank up, that's right, four that's armor. True. So this is. It's important to know because this is a, a real shifting point for Life Coach. Yep. Uh, because once he's generating four armor per turn for two mana, the job of the, the zoo lock becomes so much harder. That's true. Because you have to put at least more than four attack yep. on the board to you know chump your opponent. Now, Dr. Boom can help with that. Dr. It Boom is notorious for doing four damages uh, worth of bombs. It, it can. However, again, while we're talking about the fact that Life Coach has drawn just Guard True Heart, it gives some options to really set up the armor for the following turns. So he's now going to have four armor, and he's going to also f uh, force Kranish to clear this. Otherwise, just a card lives for a turn and does six damage right back. Which I don't That's think really we've dangerous. ever seen in a tournament. Just um, true heart, usually no. it's very like frail. Just comes down, mm. activates, and then dies. <laughs> it's Void literally <laughs> Doomsayer sometimes, where I don't even think I remember just a card true heart that, like voice acting. Like, what, what's the sound that is? I don't know. We're going to find out. we got to listen. It's disqualified. Here. Disqualified. Ah, you're right. You don't get to hear from uh, the Tr spectator. Trust the Moz right, for yeah. the Jeperino questions. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Oh, and I, I think Void Caller is being offered up as the sacrificial lamb, but uh, that fiery war axe draw mm -hmm. changes things. Well, now that um, Shield Slam is one out of range from cleanly removing Dr. Boom, that is really inconvenient. That is. And he used both of his shield blocks and his shield maiden, which normally allows you to pair seven armor very easily. Right. So tank up is great, but it's still not enough. Yeah. On the other hand, Kranich's hand is not very good at this point. <laughs> Double Void Collar. Speak to me. The Owl is void definitely pretty good, though. Yeah. The Owl to, is good. Um, you know, limit Life Coach from drawing more cards. Because, you know, Warlock right. Hero Power for the Life Tab, you can always draw cards. The control warrior really relies on acolytes to draw. But you definitely want to be the aggressor, right? Like it's nice to have the Iron Beak Owl in hand to say, okay, he'll draw less cards. But it'd be nice to have like some, some big threats. It'd be nice to have a void collar into a Malganus. Sure. Nice to have a Doom sure. Guard. He's not really pressing anything, and Life Coach is just gonna be able to get a whole bunch of armor per turn. So I wonder if Life Coach is gonna go aggressive with just the car. And Shield Slam Dr. Boom twice and hit the Whoa. face. And that means because he wants to use his 6-3 as a way to potentially kill. And if he clears the board, then Ysera ends up being able to be played. However, Kranich does have an answer to that Acolyte, which is something Life Coach won't like to see at all. Ooh, that's OK. So Nerubian Egg makes the Void Terrors. My goodness. Yeah. That's really, a really real good big threat. Yeah. He can also squeeze in a Life Tap in case his plays get better. There's the Void Collar, but right. uh, probably just going to end up summoning out a Void Terror, assuming it even gets traded into. Just Boombox ends up work. trading. Yeah. That was and the longest surviving Jessica Trueheart in the history of competitive hard stuff. Yeah, let's set up a statue. <laughs> Commemorate her. One turn. So this is 7, 9, 11 damage on board. Very scary because Life Coach knows that he might end up dying to a Dr. Boo. Or not Dr. Boo, a, a Doom Guard. Doom guard. Right. Yeah. And that means Life Coach hypothetically feels like he has to do something, but. Does he? If he tanks up, does he still die at all? Um, he doesn't. 
But uh, the thing is, like, if you play Ezera, you can't use your hero power. And uh, at this point, you have to expect the second power warming or like the two Doom Guards that's right. in his deck. Even Malganus would be uh, probably enough to kill him, right? Another thing worth evaluating is the fact that Ysera is in the oh. Control Warrior deck, and sometimes Warriors are replacing the Alex Straza with Ysera. Okay. And that's a funny way to interact because then that might be the thing that keeps Life Coach safe in this position. It's always a reflection on what you expect to see, right? Oh, Ysera oh, awakens! That's a really good one. But, Doom Guard is on the top. Oh, that's oh, a little bit too goodness. late. Uh, and Kranich needed that Doom Guard to finish the game, and finish the game he will. That's a 2 0 lead for a Korean player. Mm. Yeah, he, uh, you know, his, his lineup so far has been very much reminiscent to me of Firebats last year. Uh, he's got that Zoo, he's got that Hunter. That's right. And he is just trucking down his uh, Life Coach's decks. Oh. And if anything, I mean, if history is in any indication, Kranich will be on a path to the winner's match if he's able to win at least one more game here. And Kranich is the only player returning from BlizzCon 2014. That's something that we have to say to his merit. In a game like Hearthstone, it's very difficult to try to get to BlizzCon twice. I mean, in any game, to get to BlizzCon twice in a row is very challenging. But Kranich is the only player so far to do it. Yeah, consistency in um, you know his skills in deck building brought him to this position. So he definitely wants to qualify for BlizzCon and go into top eight. And on the flip side, how devastating is it to lose that warrior to the zoo when you know that Druid is still available to your opponent. And that's going to be a very difficult matchup to overcome as well. Right. You have to not only win that matchup, but you have to kill Druid three times, a class that's known to be very consistent. In fact, it's so consistent that 12 out of our 16 players have brought it. So it's going to be very challenging for Life Coach to overcome that. Yeah, especially because I predict that Life Coach is going to bring Handlock. He always brings Handlock, um, you know. Every single time, even though we asked him, it's like, oh, sometimes you want to bring Zoo to like change it up or something. But he was like, oh, I'm just really, really good at handlock. You know, it's my comfort zone. So that's going to be another hard matchup. But Yikes. first, we'll start with the um, Druid versus Warrior. It's stressful for Life Coach. He looks a little overwhelmed at the moment. You yeah. can look at him taking deep breaths, leaning back. He's not really uh, engaged just yet. Uh, Kranish does have that Darnassus Aspirin and the Innervate, however, Savage Roar is not what he really wants to look at early game. He wants other minions so that the ramp can hit more powerful opportunities to get Savage Roar and finish the game. Yeah, you talked about uh, how consistent Druid is. I feel like Darnassus Aspirin has the, been the card, really, that's made it this consistent. I mean, it, it's always been a powerful deck. We've always seen it in tournament. Obviously, it has the ability to win with the combo. It has great removal. Uh, but Darnassus Aspirin has actually just made it so much more consistent to play mm -hmm. because you have so many options. Now you have the Wild Growth, oh, you have no. the Innervate. Well, Although, he's got three ramp. There is, a, there is an idea that <laughs> uh, I was discussing with some other players called Druiding Too Hard, which is when your opening hand is just so much mana ramp and no real threat. Now, obviously, Kranich has a couple turns here to draw into something like a Shredder, Druid of the Claw. He can find something, but right now, I mean, he can ramp up his mana. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what he has. Ramp so hard. Yeah. Ramp All the warriors so hard. trying to find me. <laughs> The the 360 windmill dunk of ramp is what uh yep. is what Cranch's hand is. On the other side, uh, Life Coach should be um, pretty happy to see that War Axe finally to yeah. start. Yeah, that's and you know that's an interesting point because prior to the oh, Grand Tournament, goodness. you didn't need to you didn't need to really try to find a fiery War Axe against, against Druid. Druid. Yeah, exactly. Right. They're just wild growth or yeah. just hero power, right? That's you could be looking do. for that death bite, but now you kind of need that fiery War Axe to, right. to deal with the Darius So here's the the good news and the bad news. The, the good news is Kranich found the early game ramp, and this is the time you do want to draw your ramp. Wild growth in the middle stages of the game is not very powerful, and wild growth at the late stage of the game. While it cycles, you'd rather just draw the card that it would have drawn anyways exactly. with more mana. Now, Life Coach, on the other hand, because he sees a ramp, he's going to be like, oh, that stinks. But if no minions follow up, that gives him time to stall. And Warrior does get really powerful in the mid-stages of the game, too. That's just good. He got that Druid of the Claw, so uh, he's looking at, well, actually, next turn he'd be on four mana, so it'd be kind of awkward to innervate right. out the Druid of the Claw. Exactly. A four mana drop or a six mana drop to innervate would be right. perfect for Kranish. Mm -hmm. It's still awkward, though, because, uh, like you said, um, if he does innervate through the claw, but then, like, th what does he have next turn, the following? Mm. Keeper of the Grove is, like, okay, but it's, it's, it, like, it's something to play. I don't think you want to silence the armor smith here. You definitely don't want to just do two damage to his face at this point, so I feel like he's probably just going to hold the Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, I mean, Drew the Claw is a possibility. Um, however, you, you do know that if he 
plays mm. Execute and removes that minion very easily, yeah. then you're back in the same spot. You have right. minions that you don't want to do. Do you even Wild Growth here so you can set up for something better in the following turns? Oh, yeah, it's he's going for the... Big question. He's going for the Awkward Druid of the Where Claw. Shall I strike? The oh, problem yeah. with Wild Growth in here is that you do lose a card, right? I mean, it is. Do. it does represent another card in your deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it really pays off if uh, Kranich has put, um, you know, Adrodrix, because we know that two Ancient Valors are usually in the Druid decks. Sure. Yeah, it really pays off that you get the Adrodrix to actually cycle more cards with so much mana. So Life Coach obviously has more than enough means to remove the Druid of the Claw. It's just kind of a matter for him of like finding out what the best way is. Sure. Uh, there's Bash, he could hit with the second charge of the Fiery War Axe. Uh, yep. He could use a Shield Slam. Don't think that's what he would want to do here. Because he'd have to like, use it with another card. So There's some Probably. mana efficiency with Cruel right. Taskmaster, though. So I think that's one true. of the things that you do want to evaluate is how does Bash and Shield Slam interact with the mid stages of the game? Mm -hmm. It's like, what, is my, what does the opponent indicate when he has to innervate Drew of the Claw on four? So yeah. it's like, do I have to save Bash for Pilot Shredder? Maybe not. No, you want to keep your minions. You want to keep a board against Druid. So I would um, attack with the. I will attack Drew of the Claw here. And actually, take it out that way. Definitely use all your war. Okay. So he's, he's got board now, which uh, is usually not something the control warrior has against the druid player. It's true. This no, is, it's uh, very rare. This is a nice advantage for him early on. And Kranich's hand, let's see what this draw is, but yeah. Oh, no! Oh, wow. He has drawn into pretty much just ramp and combo pieces, and he had the one druid of the claw. And it might just be time for Keeper of the Grove to come down I and get rid of that cruel taskmaster. Yep, put a body on the board. At least that's okay. a little bit efficient, you know? It is, um, although, you know, now that Life Coach has had this turn where he's just removing and passing, not really developing anything, that's much better for Life Coach than it is for yeah. Kranich. And Kranich didn't even get to Wild Growth, so if he hits a very important card at seven mana, then he can't even play that. Well, okay, that's a playable you, I mean, card. That's a pretty good card to, to it's draw. It's great for the six. combo, but at the same time, you'd want to have more cards in hand when you play that down. Right. So. And obviously, Life Coach has a really simple answer to that. Although, one thing that you have to consider with the Shield Slam is that you have to consider two things. First, um, the Emperor Thorson is a 5-5, and it dies to another 5-5 minion. The second is if you play Shield Slam, you don't actually don't do anything the rest of your turn, yeah. which are, you might be OK with because the game goes on in your favor. Like the longer it gets drawn out, but the second stage is, um, you know, is it is it worth having Thorson reduce three cards? But what if one of them's Ancient of Lore, and then you know he draws more cards, and you might be dying. So this is a very tough situation because you do want minions on the board, but Emperor Thorson's the one of the worst what you can leave up. No. Yeah, I it think is I think I buy into your argument though. He only has three cards in hand. He hasn't really been playing. Although, if you're thinking about it, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, why hasn't he been playing things earlier? You have to assume that they're either ramp cards or they're combo pieces, right? Sure. So, so maybe that actually factors in too. How cheap do you want to let a combo get? Sure, but the yeah, the possibility of uh, inch of the floor might be right. a bit too high. And Life Coach doesn't strike me as necessarily a risk-oriented player all that often, so. Oh, he's yeah. sticking it. This is a good play. I do like Shield Maiden. I think Shield the armor is going to be a safe zone. So that way, if the board gets too crazy, not only will you be able to kill Emperor Thorson, but you have Sylvanas and Shield Slam to kind of help you control the state of the board. And I like that uh, Life Coach was thinking about this very in depth because I think it's too it's too slow to just Shield Slam and pass. Like you float three mana, yeah. then Shield Maiden still gets more awkward to play as the turns go on. Now Kranich is stuck again in the awkward position. Like, hmm. what do I end up doing here? Wild right. Growth is still useless, and he's drawn that since turn one. He needs to find more threats. And um, it's like the Wrath might be the way to do it after using Force of Nature to clear. Oh. So this is definitely not something you want to do as a Druid player, but as you said, you just let's find the threats, keep the board clear. <laughs> well, the the nice thing about this ordeal is that uh, Keeper of the Grove and Savage Roar does become pretty cheap if he wants to use that in combination later. But now look at what Life Coach has available to him. Not only can he play Sylvanas, but he can also steal an Emperor Thorson you and could. take it away from Druid. Usually you want to have your Sylvanas stick around because uh, it represents more uh, board presence That's true. than Emperor. Because Emperor, once again, you're only reducing two cards off your hand. That's but a good point. It would be really good because Kranich does have a Keeper of the Grove. I, I guess no it's a really good point. Games. Like, what, what would you rather have? Is Sylvanas to threaten the next threat? Mm -hmm. So that way, Shield Slam and Sylvanas are removal, if you put those in quotation right. marks. So I like the way you put it in Moss. Yeah, you definitely prefer Sylvanas over Emperor. What about the allure of just an ever-cheapening Rob Hellstream? 
What is about that sure. dream when you just play that four mana Grom Hell Screen four turns from now of Emperor? Yeah, you could. Yeah. Or you can also play for eight mana. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, that's also fine. <laughs> eight, eight mana card, eight mana four nine charge. I mean, I guess good. if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I like to see how uh, cheap cards. You get. <laughs> this is a really important thing to know too. Is that Kranich has just used his second key for the Grom, and Druids, last Ooh, time I checked, wow. have only two silences. <laughs> wow. Therefore, Quickest life coach turn I've ever seen. This is, uh, he knows what he's doing. It's time to go face now. Control Warrior on the offensive because Kranich has never established himself in this game. He just hasn't. Like, he had the spell Druid of the at one point, and yeah, just spells. And that, uh, that's actually, you know, as much as we talk about Druid being a really powerful class and everybody kind of bringing it with them to this tournament, that is a problem you run into with Druid. Sometimes yep. you kill yourself. Sometimes you just draw all spells. Yeah. It's very reminiscent of Rogue in some ways where, like, you know, even though it has really powerful combos and there's really great tempo plays, if you don't draw what really makes the engine go, which is the minions, then Druid just gets stuck. Look, Kranich is at nine men. He can't even draw and cycle with the wild growth. Mm. He has to Savage Roar and swipe to clear the entire board. Uh, if he just wants to swipe and then use Savage Roar or use the minion to clear, like all these things are not very desirable at all. This is, a, this is not a great place for, uh, for Kranich. And it's going to get worse because that life coach does have minions. Yeah, he does have very high quality cards, a lot of big creatures. Yes. This is, uh, I used to have this uh, this argument with Kit Kats back in the day. Obviously, Kit Kats is a very established control warrior player. And, you know, he would say all the time, like, if this goes to the long game, day. my minions as a control warrior are just better than the druids. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, yeah, this is kind of showing. Uh, there's Drew to the Claw, like, how many turns sure. late? This is an instance where wild growth in the late game is not necessarily that good. Well, he hey, it's <laughs> oh, yeah. zero, zero mana. mana. Okay. And it allows him to play two. Uh, there's, a, uh, five there's a Drake. Oh, well, the minions are coming now, at least. Of yeah. course. You're going to eventually run out of spells. But do you Ooh. have enough time to benefit off of it? Because it doesn't look like it. There's very easy trades for Life Coach. Yeah. And his board is ever expanding. Yeah. Oh. This that, uh, big game concentrate was really, really good for Life That's coach. right. The second Sludge Belcher, too. I mean, at this point, Life Coach, unless Kranich just gets something crazy off the Ancient of Lore, Life Coach can pretty much just focus on doing damage to, to Kranich's face. And actually, no, he doesn't have enough just yet, but with a weapon off the top, something like that, that would do it. Mm -hmm. Cruel, if he has a second Cruel Taskmaster. No, the, the only things that can really save off the Ancient of Lore is if you swing momentum through an Innervate or through a big game hunter onto a minion that has a target on it. However, Life Coach has neither of those things that are vulnerable to it. So it would have to be even more wild, like Naturalize or Mulch, <laughs> in order to like stabilize. But then Poison are you even seed, really winning? Starfall. Yeah, Mind Control Tech. Yeah, Mind Control Tech would be pretty clutch here. Yeah, this, this is all going to the face. Yeah, Kranich There's is just question. at this point probably trying to get information. They're trying to see more of Life Coach's cards, so. Yep, two Savage Roars, <laughs> but zero chances to win this game. Kranich does not have an opportunity to swing it. He is going Wait, to he, drop he, uh, he the plays Sludge Bell. Oh, sure, he's not dead yet. He's not dead yet, but and again, how long can he hold on for? Because Life Coach could easily draw into it twice uh, over with that. Never mind, I lied. Uh, he's dead. He is dead, yeah. Is he dead? If he, he uses Savage Roar here, the. Um, no, if he uses Savage Roar here, he's technically me a lot dead. He can kill the um, slime. Right. Let me see. Yeah, so he's actually, uh, Life Coach is actually one damage off lethal. Unless Acolyte picks it up, he has two opportunities. That's Any true. weapon, by the way, which he gets, oh, there you go. is the game. And like Life I Coach. said, guys, like I said, <laughs> I knew okay. he was going to get the axe. All right. Yeah, easy game. Get the axe. Control Warrior defeats the Druid, and that is a rare occurrence to be seen. And Life Coach is in this series now. 2 1. Yep, he's on the board. Yes. Let me say the hardest to <laughs> obstacle to overcome. I also like the strategical choice of Life Coach to go for the warrior immediately, mm -hmm. realizing that if in conquest you don't want to, you, you want to keep onto the decks that you're going to lose with anyways if the series is over because you might reveal too much information to your opponent. Sure. Uh, the more you lose, the more information is revealed about your deck. Therefore, Life Coach says, you know, if the series is over there, at least my, I'm playing warrior, which my opponent knows anyways. Right. I'm curious to see now if he goes for that uh, the Warlock or just enters the yeah. Druid Mirror. Uh, the Druid Mirror can be decided pretty early on, to be honest, uh, based That's on true. You know, kind of what you get in that uh, opening hand. It's a very, it's a very swingy matchup. But like so. Frodan said, um, if Life Coach does lose to the Druid, uh, yeah. you can plan for the worst and conceal some information on the Warlock. Nature. Right, because as you said, you, know, you very much expect you. him to bring the Handlock deck, so right. concealing that is actually kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, Druid versus Druid, there's a lot of feedback from players saying that a, a lot is determined early on through the ramp. Right. 
and Life Coach just hit one of them. He keeps Emperor Thorson, which I do like. It is another way you can seize back tempo, one of the few comeback cards. Cranish keeps his Innervate. And the Pilot Shredder, so he has a turn two play. But does he hit anything else to follow it up? And he does. Shave next, Ramus. Wow, wow, that's a that, really that's, solid. That is the dream. That's yep. almost as good as it gets. Yeah. Shade, Wild Growth next turn. Turn three, Shredder. It's the classic Innervate versus Wild Growth opening, um, kind of. And in the long run, Innervate does speed up the Wild Growth because you do have that minion swing it in for uh, four damage. Usually it's a Shredder, right? Every turn. So you're wrapping up to 4, 8, 12, 16 damage, as opposed to wrapping up mana that doesn't, doesn't do anything. The Life Fire Coach. Lord in Life Coach's hand. That's a, you know, that's a card we used to see a lot more in, uh, in Druid, in mid-range Druid, but these days it's kind of falling off because it's a little bit slow. Yeah. Dies to Big Game Hunter, which is a very common card, but uh, Life Coach has it in his deck and a golden one, no less. Yeah, this already looks really bad for mm. <laughs> Life Coach. Whoa. Oh, man. I mean, one thing that's really interesting to note is that not only is Kranich hitting the ramp, but he's also got Ancient of Lore to refill the hand and right. impact the board. It's one of the sure. very few cards that's extremely versatile to do, not only do that, but also heal in a pinch. Therefore, you know, Life Coach needs to not only command and seize the board, but have to deal with the fact that Kranich might be able to reload and go for more pressure. And looking at Life Coach's hand, I mean, yes, he could technically coin out the Drake if he wanted to. That's not a something he wants to do based on what Kranich has on board. And, yeah, you could even silence the Shredder, but the Shredder trades so well into the Keeper of the Grove. Uh, it's just, it's a bad situation. What? This is kind of one of those places where, as a player uh, of Life Coach's skill, you have to basically decide which is the least poor play you can make here. Sure. And that, that happens sometimes, especially in the Druid Mirror match. You also do want to keep the Keeper uh, for the Shade when it gets revealed. Yes. So maybe the Drake is the better possibility. Oh, he's going to go with Wild Grove and uh, ramp even more. I believe he's anticipating that Emperor Thorson is his best chance to come back. Because right. the following turns of Emperor Thorson, he can play, you know, Drake plus Keeper or squeeze in more. Oh, wow. Hands. And that, that's, I mean, that's not the most powerful play on turn five. So that gives Life Coach a slight breathing room, but it's still not very comfortable considering that there's three minions and Savage Roar now becomes eight damage just off of one card. Plus Kranich now can just next turn play down the, the Ancient of Lore. Right. Start drawing those cards. It's right. a 5-5 five, five body and that's probably what's more relevant at this point is just that 5-5 five, five body he could draw into Savage Roar and just end it right there. The timing of Kranich uh, using his uh, shade is really really good because now it forces Life Coach to use an answer to the shade so the Aspirant lives thereby he can play the Ancient of Lore. Yes. So that was a very good uh, attack. Oh, Kranich has uh, really, really kind of had this mapped out for him. This is a druid hand that he's had. This has oh. kind of really just told him exactly what he wants to do. Oh, second Ancient of Lore, too. That's right. And Life Coach only has one Ooh. opportunity to come back into this game, I feel. And that's off of the Pilot Shredder. Oh. <laughs> if something disastrous comes off. Yeah, it might be that point in time. He's going to evaluate, though, first, because he still does have Innervate, which allows him... Do you maybe plays. play down a Ragnara or innervate out the Ragnaros and just see if it hits like a high priority target? Like maybe that's something you can hope for. Uh, <laughs> a more, I, well, a more realistic option is to play Azrake and hope for a swipe so you yeah. can innervate the swipe and clear a lot of the board. Might well, be all time. of your options are pretty much like you're just hoping for something really, sure. really big to happen. Savage Roar. Not the right spell. Be great for Kranich, but not necessarily great for Life Coach right now. Is it time to see mm. what you get from the Shredder? If your opponent has one Crack savage, open that Shredder. Yeah, crack your present up. It might be time. If your opponent has one Savage Roar, you most likely will die anyways. Yeah. yeah. So, so you might as well just go you for it. Let's, <laughs> let's pop open the hood, see what's what? under there. Okay. There is... What, what are the odds nowadays? It definitely changed since TGT was Yeah. 80-something. 80 80-something 80 oh. two mid drops. If he Savage Roars, he can kill the Shade and the Ancient of Lore, thereby giving him a chance to survive. Now, and I think that's probably a safer play than to just put the, the Shade into the Pilot of Shredder, yeah, that is, hoping for the Doomsayer. At the same time, Kranich is just going to play more minions, right? He just drew two cards. Sure. And uh, what are you going to do then? Hope he drops Swipe off the top and then stabilize. Yeah. This, this Drake is probably going to die. Well, if it dies, it's four damage you're not taking. That's so I guess true. I guess you're like, get out there, Drake. Protect me. Okay. Yeah. Four, four taunt. Lore number two. Let's see if it's devastating. Oh, yeah. cut first. Yeah. Pretty reasonable minion if Drew needs to squeeze an extra mana. Again, this this matchup is determined a lot by how much you can use your mana. Yeah. Life coach. Life coach's phase kind of says it all. Yeah. Just, uh, is it Ragnaros time yet? 
Can we Ragnaros now? Uh, whatever you hit, you're still I think dead, so. Though. I think, I mean, well, if, assuming that he's like, well, one, my opponent probably didn't have Savage Roar and it killed next turn. Sure. Um, and on nine mana, it is Force of Nature, Savage Roar. Hmm. And you're not going to necessarily, I mean, you could Wrath and play Emperor Thorzen, but Ragnaros hitting the Ancient Allure seems to be the highest priority. That is, that is the best option for a life coach right yes. now, I guess. Everything else doesn't do anything. It just ramps up. And yep. right now you need... Oh, by Gotta fire be purged. Something to, uh, yeah, react to this. It is time. Hit the 5-5. Five five. Oh! Yeah, see? Good Ragnaros. But now the funny thing is the cut purse is actually going to give Kranish lethal. So That's he gets right. a coin yeah. off and gets a hero power. Well, the cut purse looks pretty <laughs> looks pretty maniacal and evil, so right. I guess it kind of fits. So funny, too, based off the way that works. Yeah. But he yeah. gives him the exact 12, uh, 13 damage, that is. Cranch not gonna miss that. That means <laughs> he goes on to the winner's match and gets one step closer to returning to the top eight for BlizzCon. Wow. Yeah, it seems Very like the order of the day is, uh, is being really confident before your match and then you just come in and win. So, that's a good play. He backed up his words. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this is no small feat. Like, I'm just kind of making light of it. The life coach is really one of the strongest players in Hearthstone. So for Cranich, this is a huge win. Absolutely. Whether it's lineup or whether it's preparation or player skill, I think Cranich has definitely executed very cleanly at the highest level on all those fronts. Well done. Right. And he gets one step closer, like we mentioned, to being able to advance out of his group. Remember, for anybody tuning in, only two players out of the four-man groups do end up going to the round of eight and to the main event of BlizzCon. And you have to win two series. Cranich won his first one. Life coach is not out just yet. He'll fall to the loser's match. He'll play tomorrow to see if he has another chance to survive. Yeah, so for Kranich, the, the battle's halfway done at this point. He just needs to win one more series, and then, as you said, he gets that trip to BlizzCon. And mm -hmm. uh, for Life Coach, obviously, as I said, incredibly skilled player. There's no reason why we won't see him, you know, persevere and make it through. So, all right, all right. Well, uh, thank you so much, guys, for casting along with me. We're gonna go over to Rachel for a winner's interview with Kranich once again. It's a repeat from last year. Let's see what he has to say. Thanks so much, guys. Kranich, great to see you back here at BlizzCon. You're our only returning player this year. So uh, was that your biggest advantage coming into this? Of course. I'm the only, one and only player who uh, just came back to back here at BlizzCon. So yeah, I don't know. My, maybe my experience just, just lead, my, lead myself to the very first win of the group. So I'm really glad. It's not just uh, Kranich that's back, it's also Kranich's magical powers, which involve amazing draws for you and kind of rough hands for your opponent. Tell me about your magic powers. Well, I don't know, maybe people will, people might uh, say that I am a lucky guy, because like last year, I was the only guy who beat Firebat in the whole enti entire bracket, and like, actually Firebat said me as a lucky bastard, and you know that I like it because because it feels like hip hop singer Kranich as known as Lucky Bastard. <laughs> so that's a sweet nickname. Uh huh. So maybe I just I just uh, show my uh, ability as a Lucky Bastard today's match. So well, I don't know. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. You are moving on, and I just wanted to give you an opportunity. Is there anything you want to say to your fans? Um. Well, uh, I did like semi final last year. And this is my second challenge, so I, I really want to get like uh, the higher position this this year. So uh, just I, I really want to say thanks to my Korean fans and other global fans. I'll just show my ability this time, like uh, to get higher position. Okay. Well, we'll see how that turns out for you. Best of luck as you continue forward. And casters, I'm gonna hand it back to you. Thank you very much, Rachel, and a wonderful opportunity to get to know Cranish a little bit better. I love that personality behind him. Last year, we were worried, like, can we communicate with some of these players? You know, they, they come from a completely different part of the world. Can we even, you know, speak with them and understand Hearthstone? But Cranish's English is fantastic for being a native Korean president. Great sense of humor, too. It was fun getting yeah, to talk Yeah, absolutely. To for sure. Well, thanks so much, guys, for uh, watching. We do want to give a shout-out to our sponsors as well. Uh, but before we go into our next break, we do want to toss to a highlight reel brought to you by Windows 10 Game DVR. When we return, we're going to have our next match here at the Hearthstone World Championships, day number one.